Welcome everyone to another edition of the Lay Preacher's Corner. We are so happy that you have chosen to join us this week and we want to thank you. We encourage you to tell your friends and your family of what is happening here. Let them know that something good happens here every week. Don't forget to join us at our Facebook and YouTube pages or you can visit us at our website at www grenadaadventist.org We are happy for those of you who are weekly tuning in and today I am sure that God has a blessing for you. Today our speaker hails from the Maribor Seventh-day Adventist Church. She is the personal ministries leader at that church. Only recently she completed an evangelistic effort where many souls were led to the foot of the cross. I am so happy today to have Sister Teresa Panchu, a woman of God. I am sure that God has given her a message for us today. At this time, I want to crave your undivided attention as Sister Panchu speaks to us. Good evening, everyone. I count it a great joy and privilege this evening to speak to you on behalf of Jesus. I pray that the message will be a blessing to you. Let us pray. Father, tonight we just give you thanks and we just give you praise for your goodness, your love and your mercy and for the blessings of this day. As we are about to go into your word, we pray for the guidance of your Holy Spirit. We pray that the message will be clear and each and every one that is going to hear that message, it will be a blessing to their life. In Jesus' name we pray thanksgiving. Amen. My topic for this evening is escape for thy life. Escape for thy life. And tonight we'll begin in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 18, verses 16 to 21, and I'll read. And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. God is closely examining the lives of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's not that God don't know what is going on. After all, he is God, but he has to scrutinize the people to know what is really going on with their lives. Now in verse 23, Abraham begins to intercede and to plead for the city. Why? Because he has relatives in Sodom, his nephew Lot and his family is there. Now Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? For adventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for the six. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, no, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous, will thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty sake. And he said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak for adventure, there shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it, if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. For adventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it. And he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, 
I will speak yet but once. For adventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communion with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. When Lot's, the Lord sent Lot to speak to his children, the angel asked him, Do you have anybody in Sodom and Gomorrah? Who should come up from Sodom and Gomorrah? So Lot went, we go to Genesis chapter 19, verse 10 to 14. The, the angel came down, and they, they came to one lot. And the men of the city compassed, compassed Lot's house to take the men. And Lot tried to prevent them, offering them his daughters. But the men would not listen. So they came in and they tried to break down Lot though to come into the house. And Lot tell the angel, and they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn and he will need to be judged. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed so upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. <laughs> now here we see brothers and sisters that they was telling Lot, if you don't let us come in, there was a man who came along and we dealt real harsh with that man. And if you don't let us have this man in your house, we will deal worse with you. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they worried themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Here's thou here. Any, has thou any here besides son-in-law and sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is what so great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lord went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that moped unto his sons-in-law. And so here, brothers and sisters, we see that when Lot went to speak with his sons-in-law and daughters, they laughed and took him for a joke. They could see no evidence of immediate danger. Everything was just as it had been. They had great possessions and could not believe it possible that that beautiful city would be destroyed. And when the morning arose, the angel hastened Lot, saying, Arise! Take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hands of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lord said unto them, O not so, Lord, behold, now thy servant have found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. But now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one, O let me escape thither, it is not, is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted the concern in this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city in which thou hast spoken. Here's the escape theater, for I cannot do anything till thou come hither. Therefore the name of that little city was called Zohar. Then the sun was risen upon the earth, and Lot entered into Zohar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the city that grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Friends all, delay is dangerous, and God is calling us today to escape for our life. The end of all things is at hand. Jesus is coming soon. We cannot afford to look back now because Jesus is coming soon. Whatever our problems are difficulty, let us not let anything hold us back. We have to escape 
for our lives. Because Jesus to give us all the signs showing that he's coming is soon. I don't know what is holding you back tonight. I don't know what you want to look back at. But looking back and delaying is dangerous. Tonight God is saying escape for your life. Escape for your life because the end of all things is at hand. Jesus is coming soon. And Jesus is in the saving business. He is in the saving business. He wants to save the world. He wants to save the world. And just like Sodom and Gomorrah, this world is going to be destroyed. This world is going to be destroyed very soon. So God is calling upon us to escape, to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior from sin. Don't be too concerned about worldly possessions or our status in life. But let us be concerned today about our eternal soul salvation. Let us not be like the people of Solomon Gomorrah, like Lord children who take his warning as mockery and make a joke of it. They were lost in the fires of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so today many are taking salvation, the preaching of the gospel, like a joke. They are taking it light. But God is saying tonight, to this evening, escape for our life. Accept Jesus into our life. Accept Jesus as our personal savior from sin. Because just as God was looking at the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, looking at their lives and see how they are living, so today God is looking at this world. He's scrutinizing each and every life today, looking to see how we are living. And brothers and sisters, if we accept Jesus into our lives, there is hope for us. There is salvation for us. Just as all the angels led Lot out, God is able to lead us out today. But we have to take this opportunity that God is offering us to escape for our lives. Escape for your life this evening. Time is not on our side. Life is frail. Life is short. Life is very vulnerable. And we only walk this way but once. We don't have a second chance. So when the messenger of the Lord come and bring a message, we must take heed unto this message. As we notice that God is very merciful. Because God was saying if there were 50 persons in Sodom, he would not have destroyed. If there were 45, if there were 40, if there was 35, if there was 30, if there were 25, if there were 20, if there were 10 persons in Sodom, God would not have destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And so today God is interested in the salvation of men and women. He is interested in the 1, in the 10, in the 5. And if he can find a righteous person, he will not bring destruction. This evening, before I came here, I heard the news this evening. There was a death in St. George, some shooting death. Life is frail. You don't know what is going to happen from one day to the next. So that's why Jesus is calling us this evening to escape for our lives. To run to Jesus Christ. And to secure ourselves in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is is our only hope there is no hope besides jesus there is no escape for us apart from jesus tonight brothers and sisters friends out there is no other way jesus is the only way the truth and the life and if we are going to escape what is coming upon this world we must secure our lives in jesus christ we must take heed of our salvation we must accept jesus today we must not be deceived like Lot wife. Many probably begin the journey, but then they're looking back, looking back to the world, looking back to his pleasures, looking back to his treasures. Carnival is coming up. Many probably looking forward to carnival. But our only safety, our own security is in Jesus Christ. Obeying Jesus Christ and accepting him so that our lives can be saved to this evening. My encouragement for us is to run to Jesus to accept Jesus knowing that Jesus is offering salvation and don't make a joke about salvation don't make a mockery of salvation because salvation is serious business Jesus came and died on the cross today so that we can have life and have it more abundantly that we can be saved from our sins and spend eternity with Jesus that all the blessings God have in store for us can be ours here and now and in the future but we can only have that if we put our life in Jesus' hand. Because Jesus is our only way out. Jesus is our only escape. Jesus is our only escape. And if we put our faith and trust and confidence in Jesus, 
we will be able to escape for our life and with our life. Because when we take the hand of Jesus, there is safety, there is security, there is salvation. There is no other way. The end of all things is at hand. Just as it was in Sodom and Gomorrah. The time was up and they did not recognize it. Because God was looking at Sodom and Gomorrah for a long, long time. And they were living lawless and immoral. The men didn't even want a woman. They wanted a man. And we see the same thing is happening in our world today. The men are living in natural use of the woman and going with the man. And this is a sign of the end because Jesus said as it was in the days of Lot. So shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man, brothers and sisters. So the end of all things is at hand. And the only escape for Sodom and Gomorrah was Jesus and his salvation. But the majority of them turned away. And the angel told them, escape for their life. Do it quick. Be in a hurry. And when he went to call his relative, they did not listen to him. But as soon as Lot left Sodom and Gomorrah, fire ran down and destroyed the city. And so it will be in these last days. When we think that everything is all right, that we are safe, everything is good, it looks well, destruction, sudden destruction will come upon the world. But those who accept Jesus and live for Jesus and are obedient to Jesus will escape and have life and have it eternally. Many I know want salvation, but sometimes something is standing in the way, something they don't want to live, so they can have salvation. But this evening, you can have salvation in Jesus Christ. You can come to Jesus, no matter what is your circumstances or situation, no matter what your desires are for the world, if you come to Jesus, Jesus will give you much better than what you have. Because if you hold on to the things of this life, your possession, like in Sodom and Gomorrah, you will lose your life, lose all your possessions. But if you accept Jesus as your personal savior from sin, you will have gain. All is win, 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 win with Jesus Christ. All is win, win, win with Jesus. So my encouragement tonight is to learn from, the, from Sodom and Gomorrah. To, to accept God's salvation, to turn away from sin, and be obedient to God because God is in the saving business. And he said, he that come to him, he shall in no wise cast out. God arms is wide open tonight to save men and women from sin. God's message for us this evening is escape for our life. Escape for our life because the only safety of our life is to put our life in Jesus' hand and to live for Jesus and turn away from this world because this world is heading for destruction. There is no hope anymore in this world because everything in this world is going to go up in flames. It's only the life that is in Jesus who accepts God's salvation will be saved and the life will escape the destruction that is coming upon the world. So God is in the saving business tonight. God is saying escape, escape, escape for your life. Take heed unto his message. Turn away from the world and the worldly things and turn to Jesus and live for Jesus because it's only in Jesus we have safety and we have security and our lives can be saved this evening. So I pray in the name of Jesus for those of you who have listened, that you would have learned something, that when Jesus called, when his message come, we must act quickly. And we must be determined to go forward no matter what. Because looking back is only death and destruction. Because we saw when Miss Lot looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. She was looking back to her riches and her pleasures in Sodom. But she lost Sodom, she lost her life. And so, brothers and sisters today, if we keep looking back to the wall, if we keep living in sin, if we don't accept Jesus, there is no escape. But my encouragement tonight for all of us is to escape for our life by accepting Jesus, not delaying, but keep on pressing on and keep on looking to Jesus because Jesus is going to come very soon. And all those who accept Jesus will have salvation full and free, and they will have eternal life in Jesus. So tonight, as I conclude, may God bless you, and may you meditate upon these few words, and may the Holy Spirit minister to your heart and to your life, 
so that by God's grace, if you have accepted Christ, you will keep moving on. You will not turn back. And if you have not yet accepted Christ, that you will run to Jesus, give your life to him, escape for your life, because destruction is coming. So may God bless us and may the Holy Spirit continue to move, walk and direct your life. And may you accept Jesus as your personal Savior from sin before it is eternally too late. So let us pray. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise this evening for your word and your message. You say you are the way, the truth, and the life. And everyone that accepts you as their personal Savior from sin will have salvation full and free. So I pray for all those who are listening and will listen there, Father God, that those who know you will keep on living faithful and true to you. And those who don't know you as Lord and Savior of their life, that they will escape for their life. Run to you, Jesus. Before it is too late, in Jesus' name we pray, thanksgiving. Amen. Good night. Thank you for viewing the message today. As you've heard from the woman of God, God wants to save you. He wants you to escape out of your dire situation. He wants you to escape from the pit of sin. He wants you to have a part in his eternal kingdom. Even if you are the only one out there desirous of salvation, God wants to save you. Why not accept him today and make him your Lord and Master? Why not escape for your very own life? There is a place for you in the heart of God. Why not accept him today? At this time, I want to invite you to join me as we pray, as you allow Jesus to enter your heart. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for using your woman servant today to proclaim your word. Oh God, may someone escape from the camp of Satan and run into the arms of Jesus. May someone today receive you as their personal Lord and Savior from sin. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next week, may God bless you.